Hey, hope you're well. So this video is all about sanders and sanding, in particular these two sanders that I've just bought for a long-term test, literally putting the money where my mouth is. We'll come back to those in a minute. So I've talked a little bit about sanding and about sanders before. In particular, I did a video a while back called Which Sander When, which took every single type of sander that I owned, and there were many, uh, plus a couple that I didn't own, and talked about when you might use those, uh, what specific applications they were for, and what the differences were between them. At the conclusion of that, though, was that you can do... Let's say most people will be able to do 90 some percent of most of the sanding that they need with just two sander types. This one, a six inch or 150 mil random orbital sander, critically with a five millimeter stroke. And this one, a smaller sheet sander, an orbital sander with a much finer stroke, two to three millimeters or thereabouts. These two sanders will do the vast majority of the sanding applications that most people need to do. Let's just have a, a quick recap about the difference between them. So the most obvious difference between them is that one is round and one is rectangular. That might seem like a silly distinction, but the reality is most random orbital sanders are round and most orbital sanders are rectangular or square. This one is uh, Festel's RTS 400. It has a particularly distinctive size of pad and there are only three or maybe four sanders that I'm aware of that have this. It's slightly smaller than a regular third of a sheet sander and a little bit bigger than a quarter sheet palm sander. Orbital sanders make their sanding by doing an orbit literally sort of like going round and round, not oscillating like this but actually making that movement. That means that it's a circular but predictable movement and it means that you can introduce scratch patterns into the surface if you get a bit of grit or if you get that working a little bit too heavily. Random orbital sanders have the same sort of orbital motion but the pad itself isn't fixed. You can spin this pad freely without any problem at all. So although the pad moves in an orbit, it sort of moves like this. It's not predictable. That's the random side of it, which means that you don't get those predictable scratch patterns. So I said before that I favor a slightly coarser orbit or stroke on a sander. This is a five bell. That just means it's, it's literally the amount of space that the sander has to move. So five millimeters from side to side. That's a little bit more aggressive than most finishing sanders. And I just thought I'd demonstrate quickly. And all I'm gonna do is sand for about 30 seconds with a piece of P120, just to see what kind of pattern emerges. Okay, so 20 seconds, probably enough there. So what we've got is a very clear, very distinct edge to it. I was moving the sander around very slightly, as you would, you wouldn't just normally plant it straight down, but there's a very distinct, very clear kind of bald spot in the middle where you're just not getting enough pad pressure on there. And that's down to, the, obviously, the pad uh, fixing belt goes to the center there and you don't get the same sort of rotational speed at the center as you do at the edges. But that produces this very distinct sort of pattern, very clean, very clearly defined edges where the five mil stroke is. And fairly obviously, if you've used the sander normally, you'd move that across the workpiece so this central patch wouldn't be an issue. Just have a quick look at what the orbital sander will do for us. Okay, so I had both of these sanders set to full speed. I should have, should have dialed them back a little bit. You can, you can see quite clearly how the difference here with the orbital sander. It's, you, you don't get full contact across the pad. Uh, you need to sort of work that a little bit and the edges are much less distinct. And if you look closely at these very edges here, you can see that telltale little pigtail or swirl pattern where the grit starts to scratch in there. 
steady orbit. So not a great sander for large flat areas like this, but where orbital sanders really do excel is at finer details like edges. Make no mistake, a random orbital sander can do it, but the physical size of the disc against a fairly narrow edge, three quarter inch or 18 mil, means that it's very easy for it to be a little bit tippy and not to get a perfectly flat result and it's very easy to round that edge over. It is much easier to use a smaller, lighter sander that's more appropriate for this kind of work. So hopefully that clarifies or crystallizes the difference between orbital and random orbital sanders for you. And as I said at the start, these two sanders can do 90 some percent of the work that most people need. If that's the case then, and I've got those two sanders, well why, oh why, oh why am I spending my hard earned money on these two? Well, the simple truth is that this one dates back to 2007 and whilst it's working fine, I've moved on a little bit from it since I've made my random orbital disc sander. This has pretty much lived in that. I've been fairly vocal about my concerns about the Merca Duros, and I've been using this Sealy wannabe alike for the last year or more, and I've been really happy with this. I've got over my flappy paddle phobia to a degree. And also, I mentioned earlier on, there are very few sanders of this particular type with this particular pad size. There's Festival's RTS 400, there's a uh, Roops, Roopers sander, a brand we don't tend to get much here in the UK. Uh, there's a Bosch, one of these, which I compared to this one um, way back. Uh, and there's the Merca Dios direct electric orbital sander, which is the closest thing to this. I spent a very pleasant day out at Merca's uh, head office with a few other guys. Uh, shout out to Josh at the Natural Workshop, really nice to meet you. And I had the opportunity to purchase these. I did not pay full price. I did get a discount on them. And it occurred to me that whilst I can have opinions on things, taking them out of the box and having a quick play with them, you can only really form a proper opinion of something once you've used it for some time. And I wanted to buy these to have them as a long-term test. So these two are available as a two pack, so two sanders in one box. I bought them separately, although it cost a little bit more. Uh, it's my intention to give these away at the end of the test, the long-term test period to some of my channel members. Uh, do go and check out 10minuteworkshop.com for more details on the 10 Minute Workshop Plus member platform. As I say, this won't be for six to 12 months, so you know, no need to rush. Um, what you get in the box with the Deros, as I said before, I've had my say about the Deros before. Uh, we'll see how it works out as a long-term test. I'm very happy with the general sort of concept of it. You get a five, six inch pad and a five inch pad. You get uh, five, I think, sheets of mixed sets of abrasive a big thick set of manual and a detachable removable power cable at five times as many <laughs> sheets of abrasive as you get with the uh, Festool RTS. It's the, the Dios that I'm most interested in to be perfectly honest as it's the closest to my, my favourite, probably my favourite sander ever, the RTS 400 and you get much the same sort of thing. You get the, the sander itself, book of words, mains cable and a set of abrasives. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna have a closer look at the at the Dios. I think to to start with. So very similar sort of size and shape as I said before. It's the same pad size, identically as Festool's RTS 400. Pad size apart. That's pretty much where the similarities end. The Merca's much smaller, much lower, despite this much thicker sort of pad at the base and it's actually a little bit lighter as well not exactly a heavy weight the RTS it's uh, 1.15 kilos or thereabouts whereas the Merca comes in at just over a kilo uh, obviously very lightweight that's good for extended periods and just a 
a really nice feel in the hand. This is something that's hard to get across when you just see stuff online. So I would always recommend that people, if they're serious about buying a sander of this sort of type and price, try and get hands on with it somewhere. Um, talking of price, uh, prices fluctuate, but here in the UK, street price for a new RTS 400 is currently around £300. Uh, the Merca is half as much again at around 450 or so. So quite a big investment. I'm not going to, this isn't a comparison between the two because obviously it's not really fair comparing a 2013 sander that's had a hard life to a daisy fresh out of the box uh, Merca. Uh, if you want a full on comparison of features and all that sort of stuff, my YouTube pal Leo over at the Handicraft channel did a good comparison of these two and also of the uh, Deer Ross compared to his Festool ETSEC as well. So great, great channel, well worth a look. Uh, go and check out Leo's videos. So one thing about the Merc is that I'm, I'm, some people love this. I've never got to grips with it. Um, uh, the, the speed control on the flappy paddle. So you activate it and the further you press, The higher the speed goes up to the speed that you've set as the maximum on this. Perhaps if you're using it all day long, you'll get used to those sort of nuances, but it just doesn't work for me right now. So I'm going to switch that off, which you can do. Uh, you just take, uh, it's a press on the uppy downy buttons and that should be straight on and off now, depending on the speed that you set. So already it feels great in hand, you know, this is going to be my, my sander life for the next 12 months. Uh, I am going to do a very quick test like we did with the two Festival sanders on that piece of painted board and we'll see what sort of scratch patterns they, they come up with, sanding patterns. Uh, and then we'll just sort of round this out, I think, as the initial, uh, the initial introduction. Okay, so I've got a fresh piece of uh, Abernet P120 on the Deer Ross. We'll do that first. I forgot to put the dust collection in. You get the general idea. I'm plugged into the wrong thing. I'm going to do that one again. That's a little happier. Okay, so we can see more direct comparison there. Interesting. We'll, we'll come back to that in a sec. And let's do the Dios. So, arguably, as you might expect from a brand new sander with a brand new pad and a fresh piece of paper, uh, the Dios has done better, don't have the wear on the ends of the pad, uh, but overall very good. Uh, none of the tell telltale little pigtails at the edges, which is nice. And once I've got the sand, uh, the extractor connected, yeah, the, the Dios uh, is a nice clean disc as well uh, with a, a, a tighter middle, so less of that bald spot for want of a better word. So there we are, that's the first time out using the new Merca Dios and Dios. I'm not going to read too much into this little sample because it is literally the first time I'd use them. I didn't have the dust extraction, or rather I had it plugged into the wrong socket to get the dust extraction working with the first time out on the Dios. And obviously I've had the Festool and the CD for a long time, same with the RTS 400. Uh, first time using these, certainly won't be the last because these are going to be my go-to sanders for the next 6 to 12 months. The Festool. 
ECS-155 from 2007 is going to go back into its random orbital disk sander station and the RTS-400 will go back on the shelf with the other sanders or maybe I'll just put those out of the way because I really do want to use just these two. I'm going to call this one done for this week though. Thank you ever so much for taking a look. Hope you've enjoyed this little whistle stop tour about the new sanders around the new sanders and a little explainer of the difference difference between orbital and random orbital sanders. I want to say a big shout out and thank you very much to my 10 minute workshop plus members. Uh, the plus platform is a new member platform and uh, we have a, a, a great group of people, a great community over there who really help me to shape these public facing videos with the conversations and the comments that we have as a special little thank you. I'm going to be giving away this Sealy Sander to one of my plus members. So if that's something that might interest you, then head over to 10minuteworkshop.com for more details or go to 10minuteworkshop.plus. It will take you straight to a sign up. But that's it for this one. Thanks ever so much for taking a look and I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.